Hello and welcome to this presentation about Lifecycle Services, a drill down to the basics of your Lifesaver. My name is Jens Seiger Christensen. I am the AX Program Manager for Western Computer. And today I'd like to talk to you about the Lifecycle Services tools and how it can be applied throughout an implementation project for AX. So I'll give you an introduction to LCS and I will show you some of the tools that are available in Lifecycle Services and then I will give you some hints on how to get started pretty fast on using the Lifecycle Services. So Lifecycle Services is a Microsoft Azure based collaboration portal that helps organizations improve the predictability and quality of their AX implementation by simplifying and standardizing the implementation process in order to realize the business value faster. The goal of the LCS here is to deliver the right information at the right time to the right people and also to help ensure repeatable, predictable successes with each rollout of an implementation, an update, or an upgrade. And the tools that are applied in LCS, all of them provide value in different areas of, or stages or phases of the project, which is illustrated here in terms of a defined phase, a developed phase, and an operate phase. I will give you a brief introduction on which tool set applies for each area. So we'll start off with the defined phase is where we gather a requirement and also build up the process, the base structure of a implementation project. And this is where the organization will be able to standardize the business processes and so on. So I will go through the tools here. So the tools that I will show will be the project's dashboard the business process modeler, licensing sizing estimator, the usage profiler, and the infrastructure estimation. So if you have a customer source user, you will be able to access Lifecycle services. It's from a website and you will sign in with the same login as you have for your customer source. I will do that right here. And the first thing that you will see when you get access is the portal for your login to show you which projects that you will have access to. So I will go ahead and open up a test project just to show you. So a lifecycle services project, this is the project dashboard here. On your left side here, you have some setup information where you can make connection if you have SharePoint Online, if you have Visual Studio. In the middle here, this is a good tool for the project manager. It will give the project manager information around the status of the project, where they are. It's not a requirement to use this piece here, but it allows for you to have a methodology attached to the project. You can create your own and you can follow the status of each of the phases here. And you can create tasks and you can upload documents and you can associate documents to that as well. If we go to the right here, what we see here is we have the environments settings. It shows you which environments that are connected to the LCS project. There is a small installation that needs to be done. And I will not go through that today, but if anyone has questions, you're more than welcome to contact me on how to set that up or read the documents that I will provide links for later in this presentation. On the far right, this is where we show all the tools that can be applied within this project. So some of the tools in the defined process that we will show is the business process modeler. The business process modeler can be used to create, view, and modify the process libraries and flowcharts. It helps you to align the AX processes with your own, if you will. And also you can perform this fit gap analysis between the business needs and the standard process in AX. It's also possible to add new business processes and create flowcharts for processes that are not already defined in AX. And then you can export them to Visio or to Visual Studio online or the Team Foundation server in order to track development and deployment. Lastly, you can also use a, the task recorder in AX to create training and onboarding materials in order to help to speed up the user adaptation. I can give you a short show on how it, will, it looks like here. This is a template that gives you some information on it here. So everything like this can be exported into AX. You can run the task recorder and perform the different processes here. What the task recorder will do is it's actually going to record, as you see down on your right here, it's going to record the video of all of your clicks. 
And when you export that out and import it into your business process modeler, it will generate this flowchart and it will also associate the video with it. So a very neat tool that can be applied in many places throughout an implementation project and also after an implementation project is done. The other tool that I would like to show you is the license sizing estimator. Let me go back here to our tool sets and we have our license sizing estimator right here. This will help you simply estimate how many licenses that you need and what types, whether it's an enterprise, functional license, or if it's a task license. There are over 90 roles that are predefined and you can modify any of them or create custom ones to fit your organization needs. And then you can see the impact of your licensing is here. So everything are put in here and then you can generate a report and you can see exactly what kind of licensings that would be needed in terms of your implementation. Okay, so I will jump to the next one which is the LCS infrastructure estimation. The infrastructure estimation will give you information of what would be the minimum requirements for the installments in terms of how many servers and how many cores and how much CPU and how much RAM that's needed. There are some different ways of creating it that you can set up estimate based on what kind of environment it is, whether it's a dev environment or a test environment, or if it's a production environment which requires you to fill out a long documentation about the usage profiler, that will give you information that can give you guidance of what's required in terms of servers and so on. So that's the tool here. So I was talking about the license sizing estimator and I was talking about the usage profile. The usage profiler is the data gathering tool that can help you describe your projected and current uses of the AX. And it can be entered directly in here or it can be imported from the business process modeler or it can also be uploaded through a Excel template where you can fill out information and it will provide you a summary of the usage profiler and tell you how the AX system will be used, what's the load, and so on and so on. And that's what we will come back and you will use in the infrastructure estimate and to estimate the infrastructure. So those are some of the tools I would like to show you for this area here. I will go back to my presentation here. The next phase I would like to show you is the development phase. This is where you include the project manager and developer in order to make sure the implementation is being completed successfully. It also provides you giving you higher quality, improving your quality and your uptime and make sure that the code that is development that is performed is prepared for any future upgrades if necessary. So we will look into your upgradability of this information. So the business process model and task recorder I already showed you that is where we can use this to perform the analysis and also to run through the processes and define where gaps are needed so I can show you that in a little bit as well I will show you the cloud hosted environments I will show you a customization analysis and also the upgrade analysis so going back to our project here as I talked about the business process modeler where you could actually edit the process flows and you can indicate of where you have information let me see if I can find it here you can identify here in your processes in your flows and you can add in here and you can map them at gaps as well and then you will be able to run a report to show you the gaps that are needed and be able to write up the development tasks for those. So that is the business process modeler, including with the task recorder. The cloud hosted environments is issue in deploying Microsoft AX on the Azure environment, if that's the way that you run it. I have here a development environment that is run on Azure. It's not a on-premise environment. So that can be used to give you information and that, that can be given to give you information and you can connect it to any LCS project as well. This is where we have the information and you can see how it's tied to the Microsoft Azure and the portal as well. So the cloud hosted environments give you that the control panel of your environments there. 
Let me jump back here. The next one I would like to show you is the customization analysis tool. It's an automated tool that validates the model files against AX best practice for tables, for classes, for forms, and will generate a report that can be displayed on here, or it can also be shown in more detail in an Excel template as well. You see here there are some different analysis reports that I've done here. You can go in, you can take a look, and it can give you some kind of where do you have warnings in what areas and so on. So this is a very good tool for the developers to maintain the quality of your code. And the last tool I would like to show you is the upgrade analysis. The upgrade analysis is a way for you to upload your developments that you have been doing and analyze it through the upgrade analysis in order to see how the upgradability of your system is. And right now, this ran through, did not have any issues with it, but you will be able to see information on this report of where are the areas where you need to be more assert or aware. You might run into issues in the terms of upgrading from one version of AX to another version of AX. So a very handy tool for you to use if you will upgrade later on. The last phase I would like to show you is the operate phase, so I'll jump back to my... The operate phase is where project managers and IT administrators can provide the greatest amount of uptime in the implementation. You're making sure that there are some proactive actions taken in order to ensure that it keeps running at all times. It can also run directly in to take a look and analyze what new updates comes out from Microsoft and what types of hotfixes and so on will be provided as well. So it will help you find qualified answers to issues really fast. It will help you manage your implementation to be proactive. And also it will help you getting your issues resolved really fast. If you have issues you need to submit to Microsoft, the process is much faster than it's been done up until now because of the online accessibility through LCS. The things that I will show you here will be system diagnostics, the issue search, cloud power support, and updates. So going to system diagnostic first. The system diagnostic will help you to look and take a snapshot of your current system. So let me go in and show you that. Here it is. The system diagnostic runs through the system and will give you information on how it looks. Is there any information that needs to take a closer look at? Is there any space issues on the databases or anything else that needs to be done? This can be set up to be run on a daily basis or on a periodic basis, so it will give you a lot of information. The next tools that I would like to show you is the issue search. Issue search is, let me find it first here. Issue search is the search engine that you can use to quickly search a Microsoft database for all of the knowledge base articles, hotfixes, any fixes that are in process, and so on. Also workarounds for reported issues and you can see the status of the issue so you can download hotfixes and see what code objects and the actual lines of code are affected before installing in order to understand the impact in the implementation. So a lot of good information here. There is a full tool here and we can put in an example here and it will provide information on a lot of different issues that relates to the search. So of course the more specific you get in the search, the better result you'll get or the more specific result you will. You can add additional filters and everything. And you can see for which area and for which version that you have the issues on them. When you go in here and you can see that this has been resolved, you can see that it's a hotfix. Here you can get information of what kind of changes for the hotfix that are. You can actually download the hotfix here and implement it as well. So a very good tool for you to see this as well. So jumping back here, the next tool I would like to show you is the Cloud Power Support. And the Cloud Power Support is tied together with the issue search. And that is because the Cloud Power Support allows you to create issues and send them off to Microsoft. But in order for you to do it, the first thing you would have to do when you create a new incident is to actually go through the issue search. And 
find and make sure that this issue that you have is not already fixed. So it will request you to go through the issue search again. The difference is here, if you don't find it, you have the possibility down here to create the incident. And you can create an incident here. You will get, you will get help through this wizard to give all the information in the system. You can even set up a virtual machine with a snapshot of your current system, and that will help Microsoft immensely in the effort to resolve your issues. Actually, there have been some statistics drawn out of this, and it's been shown that the resolution time has been reduced significantly up to 70-75% by using this issue search and the cloud power support as well. And the last thing I would like to show you of the tools here is what we call the updates. And the updates will give you a snapshot of what updates that are out there for your current system and give you information where you are on compared to the current version of your AX 2012. So it will show you which hot fixes are out there, if there's any cumulative updates or anything that needs to be provided for you that you can install in order to keep your system up to date. So also a very good tool as well. So that was a very short introduction to lifecycle services, a very brief run through of all the tools. There are a couple of links out there that will give you much more information and some documentation on how to access lifecycle services, how to get started, how to set it up, and also what kind of tools that you can apply in the actual phases. So as I showed you in the beginning, it's very simple to start. It's accessing the lifecycle services via the website, using your user credential from customer source to access, create a new project, and get started. If you'd like some more information about lifecycle services, you're welcome to contact us. You can ask for me or you can talk to our sales department and we'll be happy to give you much more information. So thank you very much for your time and please don't hesitate to contact us if you would have any questions regarding the lifecycle services.